All right, weather report time. Let's go right to the weather maps. Here with media forecaster Dennis Mattinson noting that dry conditions, lighter winds, and a steady warming trend in the forecast for the next few days continue dry into the weekend and a little cooler as a weak trough moving along the California Oregon border. However, Dennis Mattinson says by next Tuesday things begin to look interesting as some of the forecast models bring in a more significant storm from the Gulf of Alaska. DMAT notes it's still about a week out, but it bears watching as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Low tonight into tomorrow morning for Mammoth, about 27 degrees. Bishop and the Owens Valley, another chilly one at 28 degrees. Mammoth, June, Mono County on Thursday. Forecast is calling for mostly sunny skies with just some light wind. 51, the high in the town of Mammoth Lakes, low of about 30 degrees. Lots of sunshine on Friday, just some light wind for Mono County. 50, the high in Mammoth, low of about 26 degrees and more sunny skies with light winds on Saturday for Mono County. 49 the high in Mammoth, low of about 25 degrees. For Bishop and the Owens Valley Thursday, the forecast is calling for mostly sunny skies. A north wind 5 to 10 miles an hour, 71 the high in Bishop, low of about 33 degrees. And for Friday, sunny skies, some north winds 10 to 15 miles an hour, high of about 71, low of about 31. And on Saturday, sunny skies for the Owens Valley, some east winds 5 to 10 miles an hour, 70 the expected high in Bishop, low of about 31 degrees. So looks like we'll have some nice weather weather for the Red Prentice Memorial Shootout taking place Friday and Saturday in memory of one of the beloved men in the Eastern Sierra. Well, before we let you go, we've got some uh, nice video here from outside television. Let's take a look at this piece. America I've been coming here for 14 years now and uh, I keep being drawn back what can I say this is where I spend every spring and for me this is the reward for all the hard work during the season you get to come here and get the best turns of your life for me it's just as satisfying being in front of the camera or behind the camera you know when you nail that shot there's uh, stoke all the way around there's you know, the pressure of skiers skiing the line well, then there's a huge pressure on the camera guys to capture it. Because if you have a little bit of the wrong angle or a little bit of the wrong camera move, something really steep doesn't look that steep. There's so many ways to shoot a shot and there's huge pressure. And I, I almost feel more pressure as a cameraman than as a skier because you got to, you know, everybody expects you to get it right. Here's the camera guy. You kind of have one chance up here and I think that's something with ski and snowboard photography that's kind of unique. Once the guy goes, there's a track in it and everything changes. You've got one chance to get it and you got to get it right the first time. Experience plays a huge role. It just has to come together from all different angles. And so the only way you learn is trial and error. And we've certainly blown it enough times to, to finally know how to get it right. So quite a bit goes into producing some of these heli shoots. You land in a zone, you gotta pull the doors off the helicopter, that's kind of the starting point. We're just putting in some daisies here for our anchor points so we can lean out of the side of the heli. Try and chase these guys down the mountain. It's a pressure pack situation, it's pretty intense. You've got a lot of things going on at one time, a lot of moving parts. I'm trusting the, the cameraman to uh, have their gear locked down, have themselves locked down so that nothing's gonna fly out of the aircraft especially them, and there's really a lot of communication that goes into how to line up these shots and, and how to fly the helicopter so that we keep the athlete in the, in the camera's lens the whole time. Sometimes uh, the camera guys, they want you just to descend down the run with the skier, and we can't really do that. That's why in ski films you see that spiraling aerial view, because that's the only way that we can keep the skier in frame. You get so focused in on the shot and stuff, that you, know, you forget you're hanging out of a helicopter, you know, pulling a couple G's, going sideways a couple thousand feet off the ground. Then you pull the camera away at the end of the shot and you're like, whoa, look where I am. This is ridiculous. Yeah, we've been looking at Bell Ringer. It's sort of a complicated, I mean, the hardest part is probably just getting there. This is full on Alaskan big mountain filming. It's gonna be an experience.
Bell Ringer is one of these toe-in areas where there is a thousand foot cliff on the other side. A uh, toe-in landing is a landing where the helicopter comes in and it doesn't sit completely on the ground. We basically use the front of the skid as a pivot point and the rest of the helicopter is typically airborne. So most of the aircraft is, is hovering. That one had my heart thumping. We kind of huddled there and then the bird pulled away and it was just totally quiet, totally pristine. One thing to ski a first ascent, but it's an entirely different matter to actually produce it, capture it on film because there's so many moving parts and anybody could blow it. The photographer could blow it, the pilot could blow it, I could blow it, but then when it all comes together and you nail it, then that's, that's when we're smiling. All right, Sierra Wave TV3, an affiliate of Outside Television and getting some great video like that. That's going to wrap up news and information for us here on Sierra Wave TV3. You know we're part of Sierra Wave Media. You can hear our radio station, the new Alt 92.5 Sierra Wave Radio. Streaming on our website, sierrawave.net. Have a great evening, everybody. Good night.